personalities in the NA. It's the boys versus the rejects. The OG Thugonomics, the original Destruction Warlock himself stepping into the arena, but Jamili is just gonna meet him straight away with a counter spell and immediately start heavy crowd control. Gorecki respect, respects it, but Rub Cub then moves in to follow the chain. Jamili gets denied on the follow-up. Gorecki will get out of this and the crowd control has been stalled out. Now Chun-Li setting up for an attack of his own, but Rosie's instead going for a smoke bomb play on the Thugonomics and smoke bomb not gonna be too useful against the Destruction Warlock. They're just so durable in this matchup. I think I would have rather seen that saved for a swap to a different target. Now Jamili falling behind off the back of this initial assault. Yeah, Jamili pushing in with all his blinks there, not really able to accomplish too much. Gorecki did trink it out. Thugonomics trinket it as well. But they've so far been able to deflect this initial attack from the Rejects. The Rejects getting lower. Jamili in full retreat right now as Thugonomics, I believe, does have his Infernals out. So he's going to be doing additional damage. You really don't want to mess with that cooldown. chun -Li getting controlled up now by Jamili, who's just spamming out the Polymorphs, waiting until Rub Cub can push in to get that Hodge once again. Yeah, Rub Cub and Gorecki. Gorecki re-stealths to avoid getting Hammer of Justice. That was a nice maneuver on his part. Now he can move to the other pillar. Rub Cub sees him going after him. It's Rub Cub chasing down Gorecki, but he just cannot catch a deer running that quickly away. Chaos Bolts could be an ice block. Jamili, Temporal Shield, perfect timing. Jamili's aggression and defense on point here in game one and starting to re-stabilize. Still would like to see Roasty hold on to that smoke bomb for a different opportunity. It would be maybe good in this position now. Chun-Li getting Polymorph far away. Gorecki unable to dispel. Jamili's trying to bait Gorecki in, and Gorecki is not falling for that bait whatsoever. Now Jamili switching Polymorph to Thugonomics. They're switching their attention to Chun-Li. Gorecki sees that swap coming, premeditates it with Iron Bark, reducing a lot of his damage, but is that even going to be enough? He's really just getting destroyed. Chun-Li is his gateway to escape back to safety as both these teams are trying to set up some cheeky damage. You see Ring of Peace knocking Jamili into the open. Chun-Li stealing moves out of Rezus's book. Yeah, Chun-Li definitely doing a good job with that Ring of Peace. Good synergy by Thugonomics and Chun-Li, so Thugonomics can get as much damage as possible out with those Chaos Bolts. Jamili, I think he's playing Greater Pyro, so when he's playing these defensive positions, he's looking to set up some damage, some opportunities with that Greater Pyro Blast. But with Chun-Li all over him, it's been difficult so far. Interrupt now on Thugonomics. Rosie's just trying to create some pressure on Thugonomics. He's getting low. No Iron Bark available. Hammer of Justice on Gorecki. If he trinkets out of this, it's going to be disastrous. Thugonomics barely barely holding on, not using his unending resolve, actually gets interrupted. They continue the chain on Gorecki. He does get fully polymorphed. This is so scary for Thugonomics. He gets interrupted once again into a Garot Silence. Still not using the unending resolve, finally using it before the kidney shot. Gorecki still into the polymorph. This is a really nice chain coming in from the rejects. Tons of damage by Jamili and Roasty, both just dealing so much. Thugonomics is starting to fall. Gorecki moves in, walks into a blind, trinkets out into a Hammer of Justice. Now getting swapped to Greater Pyroblast by Jamili, lots of damage following it up. Gorecki ducks around the corner, trying to recover in bear form. They're not able to keep up the chase. Instead, going back to Thugonomics, not wanting to leave him open. But the Rejects are doing tons of damage in this matchup. Rub Cub really shining on that Paladin. Is he going to make it work in this Resto Druid meta? Where you have to wait and see Chun-Li, Fist of Fury flying, interrupting Polymorph, keeping up the damage as much as possible. As Jamili blinks back to the side of Rub Cub, he's sitting through some crowd control and unable to heal. Gorecki is vulnerable at this point. Chun -Li is vulnerable at this point and Thugonomics is vulnerable at this point. However, Thugonomics does have that infernal banked. He can pop that out and counter pressure. So Gr Rub Cub needs to get ready for it. But aside from that, the rejects are all over the boys. Well, look at this. Gorecki, no trinket, no iron bark. Thugonomics, no unending resolve. They just need one good setup. They have Vendetta coming up in 30 seconds. If they can keep Gorecki in a CC chain, I think they still have blind as well available for roasties and smoke bomb. So this is a huge opportunity for the rejects if they can just get one clean setup. Thugonomics trinket gets out. He's trying to reflect some damage from Jamili. Double uh, Chaos Bolt, or Mortal Coil comes in on a Roasties and Jamili avoiding that setup. But with Roasties, or with Gorecki positioned so far away, he can get those heals on Thugonomics, connect the Iron Bark, and Thugonomics will ultimately survive. Good block by Jamili with that Temporal Shield on the Chaos Bolts to stay aggressive, but not enough damage to put Thugonomics down. He responds to that Smoke Bomb quite effectively. Rub Cub retreating back away with Jamili. Rub Cub line of sighting Thugonomics to avoid that Spell Lock. Top Jamili off with a couple of Holy Light and then start to get aggressive. Jamili needs to get control of Chun-Li. He's blinking now away to get a Polymorph. Gorecki out of range, and now he has to walk into Rub Cub. He's not falling for the bait. Gorecki instead avoiding Hammer of Justice. Typically, you'd want to dispel Chun-Li, but Gorecki needs to avoid crowd control at all costs. So instead of 
of falling for that trap. He just decides to run away from Rub Cub, and now Chun Li is inevitably free from that crowd control. Greki escapes with that gateway wild charge jump, and Greki is quite a slippery healer in this matchup. I can only imagine how infuriated Rub Cub is at this point. Yeah, he's been trying to secure that hammer of justice. Now Roasty's looking for the blind. Greki managed to hold on to his trinket long enough so he could trinket out of that. Now a nice setup over on Roasty's. He trinkets out, uses the evasion as well. Thugonomic's gonna be fine as Goreki did trade out his trinket. I can't help but feel like the rejects, if they had just pulled the trigger on that blind a little bit earlier, I think they had it available before Goreki had his trinket. I could be wrong about that. Now Rub Cub looking for some more follow-up CC so they can do another go. Greater Power Blast was cast on Thugonomics. It gets reflected onto Jamili with the Chaos Bolt with the Infernal. Jamili blinks it, nicely done. Goreki now caught into Hammer of Justice, but the Ring of Whoa. Frost gets interrupted. Thugonomics still getting bursted down. Huge pressure, but Goreki deflects with the Iron Bark. Is it enough? Chun Li trying to help out with the heals. What is this damage? Rub Cub assisting huge with the Avenging Crusader and the re Will it be enough on Dollar and Sewers? Windwalker Death Knight making a bit of a return throughout the tournament today with Colo showcasing. And actually, Colo used to be on this team, the boys, Greki, substituting in for him instead. And I can only imagine that Colo is just rubbing his palms together like, please, Reject, send the boys down to the lower bracket so he can have a shot at them later today, potentially. We have to wait and and see as Roasties moves in, gets a sap on Gorecki, immediately opening up on Smexen on that Death Knight at the target. How do you feel about this target selection? Do you think the Windwalker or the Death Knight's better early on? I'm really not sure. I, f I, I don't know. I don't know which one's better. I feel like Chun Li has a lot of defensive cooldowns to sort of negate the Fire Mage in the Assassination Rogue. If he rotates properly, it's going to be difficult to kill. It could be one of those cases where the Rejects is trying to exploit the most inexperienced person, and that would be Smexen on the Death Knight. Yeah, let's see how he does here with Jamillion Roasties raining down terror. Jamillion actually taking a lot of damage early on, and Rub Cub able to recover with a couple holy lights now, marching his way across the map. He wants Gorecki. Gorecki sees him coming. Rub Cub's going to stall it up, but a smoke bomb gets dropped over onto Smexen. Icebound Fortitude is an even trade. It gets him out of that stun and out of the smoke cloud so he can be healed, but Icebound Fortitude is also their strongest defense for Vendetta, which has now immediately been popped. Roasty sees the opportunity and immediately tries to seize it. Smexen, let's see how he does in his Death Knight. Getting out a couple death strikes and recovering. Greki trinkets out of blind. These trades on cooldowns are quite effective, but now Smexen caught into another stun. Vendetta still rolling for a few more seconds, but Jamili is still getting just owned by Chun Li. Big maledict as Jamili gets maledicted again by Goreki. Temporal Shield gets gripped back in. They're racing against it to get the cauterized. Can they race against the clock here? They need a couple. No, they can't. Temporal Shield bounces Jamili back just in the nick of time. And Smexen's playing Dark Simulacrum, but he hasn't used it one time in this game. I really feel like with the way Jamili's just spamming out these polymorphs, Smexen can abuse that. He can steal the polymorph, then put it on Rub Cub, and that just extends their crowd control chain by so much. Definitely want to see Smexen using that as often as possible. Right. And he does. He gets the full polymorph on Rub Cub. All right, and then Rub Cub has to use the Gladiator's, Gladiator's Medallion to break out, so interesting choice there. If they can get crowd control with this Dark Simulacron of Smexen, it could be an opportunity to find victory, but Rub Cub's got a Vengeance Crusader rolling. He's the OG Holy Paladin all the way back when that talent was created, and he's going to go hammers down, try and carry the team, but he's got to recover before that point with Jamili down at half. Roasty's rotting down. Gorecki jumping into the fight as well to try and support, stunning Jamili, holding him in place, but again, Temporal Shield perfectly timed. It's almost like Jamili did not leave the arena scene since last year on point aggression on point defense and at this point i would say that smexen is starting to fall behind rub cub currently caught into a stun unable to heal but not really too much damage he's trying to march across towards grecky how's grecky going to deal with it he jumps away rub cub still in hot pursuit chasing him down grecky resells but not able to get it in time double cross crowd control perfect setup by the reject smexen on his own here Trades out anti-magic shield, soaking up all of Jamili's damage and buying his team more time to get out of crowd control as it just ends right now. Greki connects a quick heal, and now Jamili on the back foot. Yeah, Jamili taking a whole bunch of damage. He used both blinks to get that Ring of Frost on Goreki, so that can definitely backfire. Now Smexen and Chun-Li going to have huge uptime. Rub Cub into the paralysis. Is there going to be any follow-ups? You see Goreki pushing in, gets the bash on Rub Cub, looking for the Cyclone as well. Jamili probably has a counter spell available, so it's risky for Goreki to really go for it. Doesn't opt to. Temporal shield used by Jamili. Going to heal up some of this damage. Rub Cub just needs to hold on a little bit longer. Full blind on Goreki. Immediately treated it out. Nicely done. You can keep Smexen aggressive. Keep the rejects in a very defensive position. If you look at mana, you can see the rejects are far behind. Yeah, at this point, it's not looking too good for them overall. I would like to see a swap to Gorecki, just an all-in kill on him with Vendetta and Combustion. Crowd control Smexen, deny his support, and just go all out. Another Dark Simulacron Polymorph onto Rub Cup, building a lot of momentum towards Jamili as a result. Smexen continues the chain. 
Rub Cub respects it. Trades out a blessing of protection. And now Gorecki is exposed. I would have loved to have seen a swap to him, but instead looking for Polymars. Tumili gets denied and not able to follow it up. Instead, Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Smexen able to easily walk out of that. Maybe a bit of a misplay there on Roasty's part. Now that Smoke Bomb threat completely nullified. Tumili needs to be careful. He can't afford to get Dark Simulacron on these Polymars. Yeah, just, I believe that he just was, but Smexen needs to survive. He's going to use Icebound Fortitude. Polymorph Rub Cup, but he's standing too close to the Unholy Death Knight's diseases, and it's going to break that Polymorph and deny a potential ice block force critical mistakes here from the boys and the rejects may have an opportunity yeah jamili still low though not getting topped off nice Ooh, that piece from chun li keeping jamili in the wall forcing out the ice block very nicely done there was no way jamili was getting out of that one with no blinks available beautiful plays from Shun Lee. Now an interrupt on Rub Cub. Jamili doesn't get quite topped off. Rossi's taking a bit of cleave damage as well. You can see Gorecki throwing in that Gladiator's Maledict onto Jamili, reducing some of this incoming healing from Rub Cub. Still, the CC chain extends on Rub Cub. The rejects, they have to do something. Gorecki, he's just playing too far away. He's been avoiding crowd control. Really well done. Triple leg sweep coming in once again. Sacrifice going out from Rub Cub on him. Jamili will keep him alive, but the rejects is running out of defensive cooldowns fast. Hello and welcome everybody from StarCraft. You joined at one of the in most intense moments of this Warcraft game, in particular, Rub Cub incredibly far behind with all three members of his team at critical moments of health. How's Rub Cub going to recover? He's trying to do his best work, but just not able to restabilize. Chun Li smacks and tearing in with tons of pressure. Gorecki having free reign. Rub Cub removes the crowd control, connects a big holy light, but he still needs to top off another member of his team going for another one. Roasty's recovering, and Rub Cub has somehow managed to do it. Despite this restoration druid meta, Rub Cub continues to stay on that holy pout and doing whatever he can to make it work. Chun Li trying to lead the charge here. Touch of Death about to explode towards Jamili, taking a lot of his health. He's in a good position far away and able to avoid damage. However, mana still even. We've just stepped foot into dampening, which is going to reduce healing over time. It's going to become difficult for Rub Cub. He decides to use Divine Shield to save Roasties as his team is falling more and more behind. Now, the Rejects is doing a good job surviving, but they haven't done anything offensive in quite some time. You can see Smexen basically has all his defensive Chun-Li as well. Doesn't have a trinket. They might be able to take down Chun-Li in one big swap, but I think with Smexen having the AMZ, it's going to be enough to shut that down. Now, full Fist of Fury over onto Jamili. Nice ring of peace, knocking Rosies and Jamili out of line of sight. Rub Cub charging in. Gorecki looking for crowd control. Finds the bash on Rub Cub. Jamili all alone. No ice block. I don't think he has a cauterize either. Chun-Li actually preemptively used that fortifying brew and a bit of a waste of the AMZ coming in from Smex and Chun-Li back in now able to avoid some of the damage with that anti-magic zone. So that was nicely done. Jamili getting the freedom, running away, looking for CC once again. Is he going to find the Polymorph? Does sneak it in on Gorecki, but Chun-Li, he realizes he's the vulnerable one, preemptively running away. Chun Li is still low on health. His healer caught in crowd control. Roasties keeps the chain go, go, going. And Chun Li needs to make a decision. How is he going to get out of this one? Grecky tries to stall it just in time, but maybe there's enough damage to squeak even more cooldowns. Chun Li is it. still low Pops on karma. health. Tons of damage. And Jamili tries to duck out a line of sight, but he left Grecky behind and ultimately will fall. The rejects, despite fighting an uphill battle in this Resto Druid meta, managed to pull it off. They're on match point now. Lead by two. They can close it out here. We are in the winner's portion of the bracket. If we see the rejects take this, that means the boys are going to jump down to the lower bracket where they will face elimination. When Rogue Mage is good, you can almost always certainly guarantee that Jamili will be there to conquer as the Rejects look to redeem their honor from last year. The semifinalists of the Spring Finals in 2018 looking to close up for a first place finish here in 2019. Great start here on Blades Edge Arena. Tons of damage towards Chun-Li. Smexen tries to set up some defense with this anti-magic zone, this purple circle and dome of protection, but even still crushing through the weight of that with nothing but raw damage. The boys are heavily behind on cooldowns now. Gorecki using his trinket to get out of that blind. Doesn't want to force Chun-Li to use his touch of karma or his fortifying brew. He needs some tools to defend himself during the next crowd control chain. Kidney shot on Chun-Li with the smoke bomb taking all kinds of damage. He gets the touch of karma, gets bopped off. Safeguard now. Chun-Li playing a lot more defensive in terms of the trinkets he's using. With that glad gladiator safeguard, it's going to be much more difficult for the rejects to take him down. But this is still such a good start. Look at the cooldowns the boys have available. There's basically nothing left. Nice port from Chun-Li 
reporting up, kicking Jamili. These are the plays you expect from Grandmaster Chun Li. All right, but Roasties is just going. There's really not much here for Chun Li to stay in this fight. If they can get any crowd control and Greki, they drop the chain. Jamili can't get the polymorph. Rub Cub now on defense mode, trying to recover his team for the next assault. If they can set this up, they can easily just execute Chun Li, knock the boys down to the lower bracket, and continue to advance to face the Super Frogs tomorrow on Championship Sunday. Jamili is back. Rub Cub showcasing this paladin, saying, you know what, Druids? If you're all over the place, I don't care. My paladin is still going to take you down. Rub Cub charging forward. This could be possibly the game-winning crowd control if Gorecki cannot avoid it. He's kiting for his life, avoiding Rub Cub at all costs. Rub Cub is forced to run some laps across the map, but they're just going to go for damage. They don't even care if they get the crowd control. Chun Li pre or great Gorecki pre Iron Barks, but even still may not be enough to keep the chain. Chun Li breaks up the chain. Gorecki keeps the heels going. Good recovery from the boys as they start to stabilize and turn up the heat towards Jamili. They did exactly what they needed to do. Stall out the game until the Iron Bark was available. Gorecki able to get that preemptive Iron Bark from Stealth on Chun Li, knowing the rejects. They just wanted to pull the trigger on their crowd control as fast as possible. Ooh. Blessing of Sacrifice goes out onto Jamili to keep him alive. Scary situation. But now Chun Li is trinkets rotating back up in 25 seconds. He has the touch of karma to keep himself alive. He has the diffuse magic to keep himself alive. And the boys playing this a lot safer, a lot more patient, realizing the long game they'll eventually win. Blind on Gorecki, kidney shot on Chun Li. Gorecki trinketing out. Wants to allow Chun-Li to sit some of this damage. Maldex is going to be used as well. Ring of Peace gets dropped out. Now, once again, the boy's looking to get aggressive on Jamili. Yeah, and he's trying to go for Polymorphs while he's under such heavy fire. Rub Cup, what are you going to do? Jamili almost goes down. Finally, the boys get some pressure out onto the battlefield. Gorecki and Chun-Li playing defense, kiting together while Smexen tries to dismantle with just damage in the back line of the rejects. Rub Cub leading the charge, trying to get some damage rolling. Still quite a scary moment. If they swap, this is exactly what they need to do. Swap over to Gorecki. Chun-Li once again backing up Gorecki, now setting up a double stun of his own. Chun-Li hard carries in this position as they lead the assault. It's a race against the clock to take down Jamili. They cyclone the temporal shield. Perfect timing by Gorecki, able to sneak that in, deny all of the healing. Now Rub Cub needs to power through. Gorecki switches the cyclone despite the pressure, able to get these amazing cyclone timings. Looking for another, not able to find it, but Jamili still far behind. Rub Cub uses Blessing and Protection and that's going to stall out the damage just long enough. Gorecki sneaking away down below the bridge. I'm curious to see what exactly he's planning on doing down there. He's just crossing the map. He doesn't want to walk through Rub Cub, make it difficult for Rub Cub to get to him. Interesting kiting from Greg, but Roasties catches him. Fortunately, he actually got into bear form. He premeditated that swap. This bear form shapeshift plus the anti-magic zone should be more than enough for Gorecki to survive that attack. You can tell that Gorecki is more than ready to come back in this series. Potentially a reverse sweep. Yeah, I want to see Smexen use that dark simulacron. He needs to be stealing these abilities from Jamili as often as possible, trying to get the polymorph. If he can get just one or two polymorphs, he can close out the game with that. Rub Cup only really has his trinket left, so I want to see Smexen start to get some more crowd control for his team with that ability. Still, Jamili being trained down. A lot of damage going to be avoided without Ooh. that damage. The triple leg sweep. Rub Cub has to trink it out. Jamili running for his life just a little bit right now. Rub Cub really doesn't have too much healing to his system. If Chun Li and Smexen can stay on target, it's going to be so difficult for the rejects to survive. And there's the polymorph. Dark Simulacron Polymorph Smexen trying to carry the game here, but Jamili just kiting insane away. And he's got support by Roasties. Now Gorecki, he's avoiding Rub Cub at all costs, going up and down these ramps across the bridge, under the bridge. He's just all over the map to avoid Rub Cub, and his awareness to Rub Cub's positioning in this game has been absolutely insane. Smexen clotheslines Rub Cub as he tried to cross the map, and now Jamili's put behind. Rub Cub moves forward. Gorecki just jumps down below to avoid it. Rub Cub can't keep up, and Jamili's falling behind. Paralysis could potentially secure the game, but Jamili's just going to counter aggress at the same time. Smexen trades the anti-magic shield. He's going to be all right. Gorecki still max ranging Rub Cub and healing the team at the same time. Time, multiple interrupts. Rub Cub recovers, but at the cost of a lot of vital defensive cooldowns. Rub Cub does not have much time to keep his team going. There's the full blind on Gorecki. He trinkets out. Chun Li into the polymorph. Gorecki didn't really have to trinket there. I guess he doesn't want to fall behind. Just wants to basically trade out that cooldown so later on in the game it doesn't end up biting him. Now Rub Cub into a full stun. Jamili oh. as well. Another triple setup coming in. Jamili really doesn't have too much to survive. Ice Block still on timer for another minute. Oh. Maldick comes in. Chun Li looking to close out this game. Nice frost number for from Jamili, can he escape? Blink polymorph spam. Rub Cub has to spam out the heels to keep him alive. And now a swap over onto Smexen. Can the rejects turn it around? Maledict onto Smexen. That's absorbing all of Gorecki's heels. The Iron Barks to stabilize. Dark Simulacron polymorph. Pressure on both sides. Either team could go down at any point. As Smexen is dangerously low. Jamili doesn't have anything left, but he's going to just go aggressive anyway. They're on match point to try.
try and take him down. Roasties is rotting. Rub Cup having a hard time recovering through this multi-pressure at this point in the match. Blessing of Protection is going to stall it out as Jamili holds on by a thread. Grecky has managed to recover his team, getting a lot more stable. It's really Rub Cup on the ropes now at this point with Jamili. Not much left to work with. Blinks away. Gets Ring of Peace back to the team by Chun-Li. Hard carry. Grecky moves in. Continues the chain onto Rub Cup. Jamili still under fire, trying desperately to get away, but he can't. Cyclone secured. They race the Temporal Shield and just in time get it. The boys are back, putting a point on the board and keeping their tournament live. I'm curious to see what talents Jamil is going to be running. Does he play the Chrono Shift, which is really good for keeping himself alive? Basically, every time he uses the Arcane Barrage, he gets a sprint and also reduces the movement speed of his enemies. But you trade out Ring of Frost for that, so when Rub Cub pushes in, he gets a Hammer of Justice. There's going to be no follow-up from Jamili uh, if he doesn't have the Ring of Frost, so there's definitely a trade there, and I'm curious to see which one he is running. I can... I mean, yeah, I guess I feel like Chrono Shift is the better option against this type of setup. At least I feel like they're going to just be kiting around the large map, baiting Smack Sand Chun Li into the open and then trying to burst them down. But the boys aren't falling for that bait. Instead, death gripping Jamili. Ursul's Vortex on his blink. Perfect maneuver there by Gorecki holding both Jamili and Roasties right next to each other so Chun Li and Smack Sand can maximize their damage potential. Rub Cub still not making a move across the map just yet. You need to keep your eyes on that cheeky paladin. If he mounts up onto his paladin steed, he wants to get something done. At the moment, getting close lined by an asphyxiate holding him in place as roasty starts to get destroyed chun li splitting on jamili jamili able to blink to safety not typically going to be targeting an arcane mage what is going on with roasty's health there just getting completely decimated jamili obviously picking the arcane spec so his defense is better but apparently roasty's is quite vulnerable overall as he's getting stomped early on in this maledict at very low health that's going to absorb a lot of healing that roasties or sorry that rub cup is trying to power through finally managing to recover they do have an option with smoke bomb here to take out chun li he needs to be ready for that at any moment roasties can drop smoke bomb and then the healer grecky will not be able to save him and they're waiting for it they're finding the opportunity they're baiting Gorecki far away, but now caught into a leg sweep. Roasties needs to commit this soon if he wants to take, an ad take advantage of it. That was a sick play by Chun Li using the Ring of Peace, and knocking Rub Cub back into Roasties to get the doubles done. Very high level plays. And this is kind of what Zico was talking about. You can just ignore the Arcane Mage in this matchup. He's not going to be able to put out too much damage. Not the same sort of threat as a Fire Mage free casting. But as I say that, Chun Li having to run away oh. a little bit defensive. That's going to be the Maledict. He uses a Diffuse Magic to remove that. Keep himself alive with the Gladiator Safeguard as well. And now he can jump back in the action. But he used a lot of his mobility there to keep himself alive. So if Jamili can kite away, it's going to be difficult for Chun-Li to reconnect. Smexen stole pod, but there could be the smoke bomb potential. Roasties was waiting for this moment, but Smexen will save the day. Anti-Magic Zone, that purple barrier protecting Chun-Li. That's used by Smexen just in the nick of time. That was the game-winning play. It was Roasties was waiting for that opportunity, and Smexen completely deflects it. Now that damage potential potential is going to be quite low and it's going to be up to the boys to take advantage of this moment to get aggressive. Rub Cup follows the chain though with a hammer of justice. Jamili can't get out of this stun at the moment but Rub Cup is supporting him quite effectively. The crowd control chain has been dropped and Jamili going into the corner. This is the wizard corner on Tolveron Arena. You want to go to this far open side, try and bait the melee out there so you can free cast on them and expose the enemy healer. They're not falling for the bait, instead switching targets to someone in a more favorable position. Yeah, Jamili, of course, he is playing the Chrono Shift talent. So when Rub Cup does push in, get the Hammer of Justice, Gorecki is not in any real threat, especially if he's in bear form. It's going to be difficult for Jamili to follow that up. Also, Jamili's playing the Kleptomania talent, which isn't something I normally like to play against Resto Druids just because I feel like the threat of always being able to spam spell steals is a little bit more devastating. But Jamili really focusing on heavy damage, doesn't want to use the globals on lots of spell steals, just wants to use it once, remove everything, and then get out as much burst damage as possible. Mana fairly even on both fronts, but the rejects do not have a clear route to victory just yet. They're going to have to work just a bit harder to find that opportunity looking to get Chun-Li's gladiators medallion as soon as possible that yellow helmet just to the left of Chun-Li's name if that goes on cooldown has a number on it he cannot get out of kidney shots which is a very vulnerable moment in the game that's what they're looking to fish for and get out of the way while Chun-Li still has that he can easily get out of crowd control and start counter pressuring so let's see if Roasties can force it anytime soon here still building up combo points they grip Rub Cub in potentially for a swap but at the same time kidney shot Chun-Li instead in this position he pre fortifies and bruise expecting the stun nice read by Chun-Li and that allows him to hold that glider's medallion even further yep Jamili looking for some damage just
crowd controlling everyone up. Polymorph now on Chun Li, but the boys are looking so healthy in this position. No one's really taking too much damage. Rosie's getting knocked away once again. Chun Li and Smexon kind of all over him. Chun Li looking to make a swap now on Jamili. Skoreki is sitting down, or he was sitting down for a drink, trying to regen some mana, but sitting far away in bear form. His team's very healthy, and most of the pressure is on the favor of the boys. All right, arcane power available for Jamili. That lightning bolt below his health. Vendetta available for Roasties. That red hooded character below his health. Those are both powerful increasing cooldowns and can turn the tide of battle quite quickly. If they coordinate that together with crowd control on Gareki and eliminate his ability to heal, they can execute for a kill. In the meantime, the boys are gunning down Rub Cub, trying to go for the throat and that, that vital healer role that with multiple interrupts, it could be difficult. Rub Cub handling it though like a master and now the boys are forced to switch targets again over to Roasties. Jamili trying to get some arcane blast burst off but not able to find it. Still holding on to that arcane power, now committing it. Jamili could do a ton of damage to Lee, barely portaling back to safety. Jamili was looking for a cheeky kill but not able to get it and gets denied. Yep, Bash now on Jamili. Gorecki pushing in. He trinkets out of the blind immediately. Chun Li looking to close out the game, doing some damage to Jamili, but Rub Cub in a very defensive position is going to be able to keep him alive. But if we look at mana just entering dampening, it is in favor of Gorecki, and I'd say pressure is in favor of the boys as well. Things aren't looking too good for the rejects right now. Rosie's caught in two a leg sweep. He does have the evasion. If he has to trade it out right now, it's not ideal. Rub Cub was caught into an incapacitate, but manages to get out of that. Holy Light's going to connect onto Roasties, and ultimately he will survive, but he did trade out the evasion there to keep himself up. The Rejects had great momentum in game one and two, but the boys are starting to diffuse that momentum and starting to slow the train down, and the Rejects need to get it back into action. They're so far behind on cooldowns, it's going to be difficult to do so as Roasties hovers at about 50% health and Rub Cub struggles to heal. Dampening now entering effect with 7% healing reduction at the top of your screen. That number it's higher, healing becomes more difficult, and really the Restoration Druid is supposed to be favored. Rub Cub crosses the map, tries to set up for a kill onto Smex, and the crowd control looks good, but Smexon can easily deny it with usage of that Death Strike ability, healing himself back up during that vital timing, and I do not expect that Smexon will be a kill target until dampening is much higher. I would much rather see them go after Chun-Li until that time. Chun-Li committing the touch of death. Roasties doesn't have a good answer. They grip in Rub Cub, they stun him as well. Double to follow up. This could be devastating as Touch of Death explodes. Roasty gets bursted. Rub Cub needs to try and recover. He's next to them and Smexon steals a Polymorph. Dark Simulacron looks good and Roasty's dips lower and lower. Rub Cub trying to hold out till the bitter end so he doesn't have to use too many defensive cooldowns. Managing to hold on to all of them. That presence of mind. Rub Cub makes a sick play. Holds on to those cooldowns for a later push. Now leading the charge with that Avenging Crusader. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Chun Li once again preemptive fortifying brew. Will it be enough? Doesn't seem to matter. Chun Li's in a great position to just transcendence out of the fight. And Chun Li's defense looks impenetrable this game. Yeah, he's been doing a phenomenal job. Bash now on Rub Cub. He trinkets out to get the Hammer of Justice on Gorecki. Chun Li still low. He hasn't been able to survive. He uses the Touch of Whoa. Karma. Immediately gets bopped off. And this is the all in coming in from the rejects. Chun Li in the AMZ with the Diffuse Magic with the Iron Bark. There's no way Chun Li goes down in this situation. But that go from the rejects managed to pull up basically every single defensive that the boys had available. Right when I said their defense was impenetrable, they blew through all of it within a couple of seconds. And now Roasties has that Vendetta below and available. He could at any moment and he's gonna commit it right now and just try and tear Chun Li apart. How's Chun Li gonna deal with the pressure? Uses the Tiger's Lust, lands a double stun, tries to keep the pressure up. Roasties is really not getting too much effective damage during this period of time. He would have loved to get a lot more pressure. Chun Li does, doesn't even seem to care. Now we see a polymorph over onto Rub Cub stolen by Smexon once again, but still nothing capitalized off the back of that. Gorecki behind the pillar. Rub Cub would love to get a hammer of justice. They need to try and flank Gorecki as he leaves the pillar. Charges in, stuns Roasties. Roasties actually pre cloak of shadows two stuns this game both teams really predicting the incoming crowd control quite effectively playing at the top level another stun committed towards chun li how's grecky dmd with the pressure doesn't seem like he's struggling too much in this position smexon's dark simulacron available to steal a polymorph here shortly and they could close the game out with that towards roasty they grip uh, rub cub in they stun him they deny the hammer of justice it's keep rub cub away from grecky as long as possible but Whoa. sneaks in gets a polymorph and chun li gets bursted he portals back to safety but he's very far away from Gorecki. Yeah, luckily Windwalker Monks has some self-healing, so behind the pillar in the situation, he should be able to top himself off to, 
at least get healthy enough where he can go in. And Chun Li with his trinket, with the touch of karma, diffuse magic, he should be feeling pretty safe in this situation. I don't think Reb Cub has any more of his blessing of protections left to remove the touch of karma. Chun Li is going to play aggressive on Jamili here, try to slow down some of that damage, but at 25% dampening, things are going to get scary for both teams. It's match point. If the rejects take this, they'll advance. The boys will go down to the lower bracket, so there's a lot more on the line for the boys. They may play more overly cautious because of that. Chun Li backing off with Gorecki at the pillar, but they left Smexen out in midfield. Chun Li doesn't want to leave him there alone. He's going to immediately charge back into the battle. Gorecki looking try to try and avoid Rub Cub. Rub Cub's there. He's playing goalie, denying Gorecki, but Gorecki restells. So he's sneaking across the map while Rub Cub can't see him to get to a safer position to start healing his team. And good awareness, but Rub Cub now sees him. He's charging, gets gripped away. Good interception by Smexen, but Chun Li is still struggling. Gorecki just can't heal him. He's trying to avoid crowd control and heal at the same time. Trinket's out of blind, gets silenced on the trinket. Jamili all over him. Rub Cub moving in. They got Gorecki surrounded. He manages to make a getaway. Gorecki just so slippery on this druid. Yeah, he manages to escape, and now Rub Cub can't follow up the crowd control with the Hammer of Justice. There'll be no polymorph coming in from Jamili. Kidney shot now committed on Chun Li. The reject's just looking for some damage. It's going to be very effective at this point in dampening. Jamili has the arcane power that was a vendetta committed onto Chun Li, empowering the rogue's damage. Gorecki not doing too hot on mana at this point in the game either. These kleptomanias consistently coming in from Jamili, really taxing Gorecki's mana, forcing him to keep putting up the skill over time effects. Blessing of Sacrifice going to be used on Roasties. He gets swapped to. Chun Li, the one who's in trouble, he ports away. Diffuse Magic, Fortifying Elixir. That's all that he really has left. The Ring of Peace would be enough to keep him alive. Potentially, Grecky's is there to keep him alive. Managed to get the Hots up. But the Gladiator's Maldix is going to be very scary. Finally, the Iron Bark connects to Chun Li to keep him alive. And now the boys, they need to strike back and get some pressure. They got a Polymorph on Rub Cup. Great play by Smexen. Carrying the team there as both teams run on the bottom line. There's really not a le lot left for either side. And Jamili is just getting owned by Smexen right now. Gorecki can't heal him. He's too far away. If he walks out in the open, he's going to get crowd control. Instead, gets Cyclone on Roasties. Jamili's still low. Gorecki just can't. Is he going to be able to do it? He is. Jamili barely hanging on. Rub Cub trying to do what he can with basically nothing, and Jamili is ultimately ah! getting Vortex on the blink. Manages to escape just for a couple of extra seconds. Smacks in the Terminator Death Knight, looking to take him down. If Chun Li connects for even a moment, Jamili will fall. Rub Cub can no longer heal. Dampening ramped up so high, managing to pull it off for a couple more seconds. Uh -oh. but ultimately, getting no way. Out. Malediction gets denied. Rub Cub keeps him going just a tad bit longer. A stolen polymorph again by Smexen. Oh, and will it land any? time soon is then the question I, I don't believe so Jamili now still hanging on by a thread this arcane mage so annoying to just stick to it with multiple blinks available Chun Li's got so much defense though I don't see any openings it's looking so grim for Rub Cub yeah, Jamili, not really too much left to work with here. He has a temporal shield. He has a greater invisibility. When Chun Li and Smexen land on him, he wants to use the greater invisibility. It reduces damage by 60% for four seconds. Temporal shield gets used at a good time. Rub Cub completely out of mana. Jamili trying to keep himself alive everything he can, but he gets interrupted, and Jamili gets taken down. The boys seem like they have figured out the rejects, and I think the rejects have to Chun Li and Smexen. Maybe they can focus more on getting both targets low, the rejects, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to find damage. Damage. The last Holy Paladin in a deep, dark forest. Will Rub Cub find his way out? We're about to find out here. It's match point. Either way, one of these teams will advance at the end of this match. Crowd control initiated by the rejects. Damage has been exchanged, and Smexen is taking the brute force of this initial attack. But with his cooldown trade, he effectively deals with it. Dealing with the arcane power with the anti-magic zone. Dealing with the follow-up with the anti-magic shield, and as a result, nullifies the initial attack. Now, Seth Curry getting caught in the leg sweep and bursted down quite heavily. Tons of damage following that up. No cooldowns traded just yet. Diffuse magic, but that may not be enough on its own as Gladiator's Maledicts are flying in and soaking up even more healing. Rub Cub manages to hold out, but Touch of Karma was forced. Now Seth Curry is vulnerable moving forward. Yeah, he still has his trinket. If he has his portal in a good position, he should be able to survive. I see it in midfield right now, but I like that Chun Li and Smexen are not afraid to go after Seth Curry. They were able to force out a ton of defensive cooldowns, but Jamili is the main target. I think it's smart because if you sit on him long enough, it's really going to prevent the amount of damage he can do. But a big go now here from the Rejects. Touch of Death committed onto Smexen with a Hammer of Justice on Gorecki, but Gorecki with nice plays gets the Iron Bark on that touch of death. They kind of televised to go with the touch of death, and Gorecki could have read the situation quite easily. And cooldowns exchanged in favor of the boys, as would be expected. Mana not 
looking that amazing for Gorecki. Jamili trying to use that kleptomania, I can imagine, as frequently as possible. Gorecki saw that mana disadvantage starting to establish itself, so he decided to sit down for a drink, which now allows him to regenerate that mana, and the lead that they did have is now more evened out. Good awareness on Gorecki's part, realizing it's going to be a late-stage match, and taking any opportunity to regenerate mana is important. Yep, Jamili still looking for Polymorphs, just playing it up for the long game, trying to get some damage rolling on Chun-Li. Gorecki in a very defensive position. Really, the only time we're going to see the boy's health move is when Rub Cub decides to get aggressive. When he gets the Hammer of Justice or Seth Curry has his incapacity up with his paralysis, that's going to be their moment to really get some damage rolling. Outside of the crowd control, it's going to be heavily in favor of the boys. Rub Cub moves over to follow up the chain as the rejects initiate an attack, but Jamili is still the one taking the brunt of this temporal shield well timed it's going to top him back up to a safe margin i do not think that you are going to kill a death knight before dampening i would like them to attack chun li instead or maybe even switch to gorecki they're going to need some dampening to reduce the healing of death strike these heal over time effects and death strike just too durable before that point and Really, they haven't gotten anything done. The only way they could maybe navigate around that is by playing Grapple Weapon on the Windwalker, but you lose so much potent honor talents to do so. It's unlikely that he is running that. Rub Cub gets gripped into the fray as the boys are initiating an attack towards him to try and turn up the heat. With no Avenging Crusader, it can be difficult to heal as a Paladin with the Death Knight in your face, so he's going to use Blessing of Freedom and just kite away and avoid it, managing to go in there for a Hammer of Justice and actually sneaking a Polymorph. Good crowd control chain, but it's still actually Seth Curry on the back foot. Finally, some damage to towards Smexen. The chain looks really good. Smexen tries to steal a Polymorph. I do believe that he did manage to, and now he's going to Polymorph Rub Cub. Nice play on Smexen's part. Seth Curry trying to kite as well as Jamili. That Ursul's Vortex well placed now into a Cyclone. Good crowd control chain, just no damage. Yeah, it's going to be so difficult for Chun-Li and Smexen to actually establish a kill unless the rejects make a big mistake, especially with how defensive Jamili's playing. He's just playing far back, occasionally pushing in for the Polymorphs, but with the Ring of Peace from Seth Curry with the Disable Root and the Disable Snare and the Turbo Fist Snare as well, Seth Curry can keep Jamili alive far better than Roasties could have, and now Seth Curry seems to be the only target they can get on, but with the Turbo Fist, he has 100% parry every single time he uses the Fist of Fury, which is really difficult for Smexen and Chun-Li to sort of push through. Mm, Rub Cub in a bit of trouble here. Chun Li leading the charge. He's trying to make a getaway up on that steed and managing to get a hammer of justice as well. Gunning down Smexen. Finally, some damage. Where did this come whoa, from? Smexen could just fall. Another polymorph. Smexen barely holding on. Bit of a close call. I was counting the rejects out, saying that they couldn't take Smexen out, but now. They find a window of opportunity. That was the arcane power touch of death. And if you combine those together, it's a huge swing of burst damage. Fortunately, Smexen was able to survive it in that position. But if that happens in dampening, Smexen does not make it out alive. Yeah, the truth is with enough maledicts, you can take any target down. So you just got to coordinate those and a big assault, a big push onto Smexen. And you can take him down, especially with the nice crowd control on Gorecki. You sort of mitigate the amount of healing the death strike is going to do. So Smexen can't really rely on his own self-healing during the those moments. Chun Li now taking a little bit of burst. Maledict committed over onto Rub Cub. He's trying to kite away. Caught into the full stun. They may have found their target. Rub Cub into the stun. Is there anything else? Chun Li getting a little bit low as well. Rub Cub opting to sort of kite away, just topping himself off with his Avenging Crusader. It does now fade, but he got all the healing he needed from that cooldown. All right, it's game five. The winner of this will advance in the upper bracket to face the Super Frogs, and the loser will go down to the deadly lower bracket and face elimination later today. There's a lot on the line as dampening has now initiated that red number at the top of the screen. It gets higher and higher over time, and it reduces healing in the match, which you can imagine makes it difficult for healers to recover their team through immense amounts of damage. Damage. So things are about to get interesting here. Ladies and gentlemen, tuning in. Grecki avoiding Rub Cub throughout this entire series. It's been cat and mouse with Rub Cub chasing down Gorecki, making it so difficult for him to get a hammer of justice as he's often off screen just kiting Rub Cub across the outside of the map. Rub Cub actually getting polymorphed to Smexen makes a move. Will they be able to connect? It doesn't appear to be the case. Smexen marching his way across to try and get to Jamili, but Seth Curry just peeling him away, keeping him snared up with tons of damage. And it's actually looking maybe favorable for the rejects uh, with that immense burst we saw earlier on Smexen. I, I can't completely count them out. No, not at all. Jamili gets interrupted on the missiles, so the damage will kind of stop for now. Now, Rub Cub just has to keep his team alive and stable for a little bit longer. The boys, they still have so many of their defensives available. We need to see a couple more crowd control chains, but these all-in damage setups from the rejects are really scary for the boys to deal with, especially as Dampton creeps higher and higher. All right, Hammer Justice on Gorecki. 
Do they have anything out of it? Jamili would love to get over there for a polymorph, but Gorecki is in travel form. You cannot polymorph a druid when he is shapeshifted, so it was a good read by Gorecki. Instead, using paralysis, Seth Curry trying to set something up here for some burst over onto Smexin, but really not getting too much done. Maybe switching to Chun Li. And I would think that switching targets could be an effective strategy. Restoration Druids, their powerful heal over time effect Life Bloom has to be committed and stacked three times on the target. So if you switch to a target that doesn't have it, the Restoration Druid has to spend a lot of time switching it to that one. If you constantly bounce back and forth, you cost the Druid time and mana and put him behind. I would like to see more swaps from the rejects. Yep, Smexing caught in midfield when he's midfield and there's no targets for him to hit. He cannot be using his self-healing with that death strike. So if Smexing does get caught in those situations, it can be a little bit scary here. Jamili still trying to get some damage rolling. Touch of Death has been committed onto Smexen. Preemptive Iron Bark once again from Gorecki. The Incapacitate comes in. Smexen with the AMS should be able to deflect. A nice setup coming in from the boys, but the Smexen is still low. Hammer Justice on Gorecki. He still has his trinket available, opting not to use it. Smexen is ultimately going to survive but during that oh! moment. Uh, Iceman Fortitude gets traded out. The Ring of Peace as well. He's trying to chase down Jamili. Surprising amounts of damage coming in from the Rejects. And now we're half basically halfway through the dampening pool and he doesn't have icebound fortitude so i actually do think the rejects are going to take this it's it, they've seen really no opportunities for them aggressively no close calls they are going to try and go after seth curry they have to kill him in this stun do they have enough damage to do it they get another stun can they pull it off seth curry gets touch of karma and bless your sacrifice finally a window of opportunity for the boys as the rejects defense starts to crack but seth curry starts the assault rub cub moves in this could just close the game if gorecki is not careful smacks and taking a ton of damage gorecki uses the gladiator's medallion overlap with the anti-magic zone you can tell in dampening that things start to become increasingly stressful and teams make more and more mistakes as both sides start to trade unevenly smexon tries to carry the team with a stolen cyclone going after seth curry bursting him down gripping him back into the fray able to transcendence portal back away but is it going to be enough just forced to run all the way across the map and smexon terminator style once again seth curry getting cloned at low health nice maneuver by gorecki if they get any crowd control on rub cup it could be curtains for seth curry yeah seth curry in a lot of trouble he's actually running the Diffuse magic to remove the maledicts. Plus, the protection going to be used over onto Seth Curry. So that's sort of one of the last lines of defenses Rev Cubs has. He has his trinket rotating back up as Divine Shield, but really just no healing cooldowns, no emergency cooldowns like that blessing of protection, like that blessing of sacrifice. Rev Cub now getting swapped to. If they can force out his bubble or trinket here, it's going to be huge, but I don't think they have the damage in this setup. They kind of want to just bring Rev Cub in, get the cleave damage on Seth Curry. Chun Li now getting a little bit low. Hammer of Justice has been used on Gorecki. Chun Li trying to kite away. Fortifying Elixir should be enough to keep him alive, but the touch of death gets committed by Seth Curry into that fortifying brew. Gorecki might have to use his iron bark here. Nice ring of peace by Chun-Li, denying Seth Curry any damage. I did not like that maneuver. If you're going to go after the Death Knight this long and then you use your most powerful cooldown on a different target, like, that has to be an error. Seth Curry locked down in crowd control, barely trading out Touch of Karma to stay in the fight. Both healers almost tapped on mana. The dampening is ramping up to cr critical mass. Both these teams are going to find it difficult to recover at this point, and it's match point. It's anyone's game at this point. Who's going to take it? Who's going to stay in the upper side of the bracket? Rub Cub's trying to to make his team be the one securing crowd control on Gorecki, but Jamili is the one who is falling more and more behind. If he's not able to kite and avoid Smexin and Chun Li, he could easily just fall, getting bursted. Maledix connects, tons of damage. He's actually choosing to evocate. It gets interrupted on his mana is actually quite low. It could become difficult and problematic for Jamili. Rub Cub crowd control. Jamili has to ice block, and this game is slowly slipping out of the rejects' hands. They're about to get reverse sweeped. Yeah, Rub Cub having a difficult time healing up his team. He gets caught into the leg sweep on his trinket. Seth Curry still low. Nothing left for him. Maledict is used. Seth Curry uses the Ring of Peace. Actually, Chun Li uses the Ring of Peace. Seth Curry gets forced out of it, trying to run away, trying to kite the best he can. The melee wings, the Avenging Crusader from Rub Cub is going to allow him to do melee damage and heal up his team. But now that that's faded, he is very vulnerable. Touch of Death used on Seth Curry. He doesn't really have a response. He needs to kite away. He needs to avoid damage. Blessing and protection coming in on the nick of time from Rub Cub to keep him alive. Smexing can Dark Simulacron on a Polymorph. Snag that on Rub Cub. It could be devastating. Jamili cannot afford at all costs to give a polymorph to Smexen. They could just close the game out here as both teams are on the ropes. Really not much left to work with. Jamili manages to stabilize, but the mana doesn't look good. Grecky sitting down for a drink. He regenerated just a tiny bit, but that tiny bit may be enough. 
Grecky in crowd control. Smexen targeted down, but he's got cooldowns to trade. Seth Curry makes the trade, but he's so dangerously low. Both teams are not likely to go back to full health at any time soon at 37% healing reduction. Smexen trades basically everything he's got to stay in the fight, to stay on target, and to take Seth Curry down, but it still may not be enough as Smexen is just getting annihilated. These arcane missiles pummeling forward. Seth Curry caught into Alexia, but the touch of death is about to explode onto Smexen. Either player could fall at any moment. Rub Cup's completely tapped on mana. He can't get any heals out at this point, but Seth Curry isn't going to be able to make it. Smexen is so low as well, but Gorecki's mana is just a tiny bit ahead, and that drink he got earlier in the game may be the game-winning factor. Yeah, Rub Cub uses Divine Shield, but he's got no mana. He's got no cooldown. Seth Curry using the Fist of Fury with the Turbo Fist to stay alive. It gets stunned, though, by Smexen. Seth Curry still just trying to kite away. Has to defuse magic available if he needs it, spamming out the Effuser. The Vivifies over and over. Those of Windwalker Monk self heals. Chun Li ports on top of him, looking to close out the game. Rub Cub in desperation, just standing still. He does not have any gas left in the tank, and the boys coming in with the reverse sweep. Boys are going to be a feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.